In 2006, America's generational tide was beginning to turn. Gen X aged out of youth culture and were replaced with a new group of millennial adolescents who would come of age in a world being transformed by digital technology and social media. As it always does, this generational shift brought on a new wave of musical movements. One of the first movements to truly sink its teeth into the budding millennial generation was a punk rock offshoot called Emo. The first wave of emo came in the mid-90s as a spin-off of Washington, D.C.'s hardcore punk scene. At that time, it was called Emotional Hardcore. That music was raw and intense, defined by confessional lyricism that opened up about struggles with romance and mental illness. Soon, Emotional Hardcore began to blend with the pop punk that was taking over rock radio in the late 90s and early 2000s. The result was a more pop-friendly take on emo that captured the hearts of angsty millennial teens across the country. This new wave of emo birthed bands that would dominate the rock scenes of the late 2000s. Groups like Jimmy, World, Fall Out Boy, and Panic at the Disco all came to shake the world in their own way, but the most lasting cultural impact from the scene came from My Chemical Romance and their signature song, Welcome to the Black Parade. It's been remarked by many that few things will unite a room full of millennials quicker than hearing the echoing piano G note that opens the song. Gerard Way's quivering recall of a father taking a son into the city to see a marching band is one of the most iconic opening couplets in rock history. It's a rousing image with a gravita that exceeds anything anyone expected from the emo movement. Took me into the city to see a marching band. Before the release of Welcome to the Black Parade, My Chemical Romance had risen to fame with songs about the teenage experience. They sang gothic pieces about heartbreak, bullying, and mental health, and found a legion of youth who related to them. Their 2004 sophomore album, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, blasted in the discmans and iPods of teenagers across the country and soared to triple platinum on the back of songs like I'm Not Okay, I Promise. The band could have continued that formula in their follow-up, but instead they decided to chase after a more mature, ambitious sound. To that end, they took on the monumental task of writing a rock opera. The Black Parade isn't a diversion from the grim subjects that My Chemical Romance were fond of, but rather an evolution. It tells the story of a character known only as The Patient, who is forced to confront mortality and reflect on love and life as he dies of cancer in a hospital bed. Welcome to the Black Parade is the centerpiece of this story, depicting the moment the patient dies and transitions into the underworld. He experiences his death as a poignant childhood memory, going to the parade with his father. This image is depicted in the video where My Chemical Romance play the act of musical psychopomps, rocking out on a float of roses as the patient shambles through the apocalyptic ruins of the underworld. In a fitting turn of events, the video that marked the shift to the millennial era was directed by Samuel Bayer, who helped usher in the aesthetics of Generation X by directing the video to Smells Like Teen Spirit. To match their new sound, My Chemical Romance debuted a new look. Gerard Way bleached his own hair and wore white makeup to give a deathly pallor, and the band donned black and white marching band jackets, a morbid twist on the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. The classic rock influences on Welcome to the Black Parade stretched beyond aesthetics. The song was inspired by the progressive rock of the 70s, in particular by Pink Floyd and Queen. This 70s rock nostalgia predicted a generation whose creative output was a constant stream of nostalgic remixes. My Chemical Romance have even called the song their own version of Bohemian Rhapsody, a designation that fans in the music press have happily agreed with. And just as Queen did, MCR opened Welcome to the Black Parade with a theatrical intro before jumping into a rocking middle section that takes the form of high-energy dance music. In the lyrics, Way sings the legacies and memories that will carry on after death, injecting a moment of hope into the morbid material. Throughout their entire career, MCR have written about the power that love has to transcend death. The promise of love gives way the motivation to dance and shout into the void. 
This applies to the patient in the story, but it also speaks to the resilience that Wei hoped to inspire in MCR fans as they faced the tribulations of life. The influence on the album stretches beyond classic rock. The entire Black Parade album pulls heavily from musical theater. Welcome to the Black Parade even has a gang vocal bridge inspired by the musical Annie. The ultimate message of Welcome to the Black Parade is one of hope, perseverance, and the search for love and meaning. These themes could be found throughout the entire emo movement, but they were misunderstood by older generations. The macabre fascinations of emo kids spawned no shortage of backlash from people who claimed the music was pushing teens towards self-harm and suicidal ideation. It got bad enough that MCR and several of their peers vocally tried to distance themselves from the label emo. But in truth, the music was trying to do exactly the opposite. It was trying to help young people who were already struggling with the mental illness and alienation that came from growing up in a world of constant war, mass media, and enormous societal pressures. Today, many will look back at the emo movement and cringe, dismissing it as little more than a fad born out of teenage angst. And while angst did fuel the movement, the reality is that the emos were some of the first to tap into the cultural identifiers that would define their generation. Emos pushed gender norms with their fashion and advocated for queer rights. And in 2015, Gerard Way even opened up and discussed their own feelings of queerness. Meanwhile, those discussions of mental health that spawned so much backlash helped break down stigmas around depression and suicidality, and helped bring on a world where more and more people feel comfortable seeking the help that they need. When My Chemical Romance wrote Welcome to the Black Parade, they were trying to create an enduring piece of music that would last beyond their own moment. This lofty goal may have been hubristic, but the band approached it earnestly, and they were rewarded with musical immortality. Okay, I know what you're thinking now. You're thinking, golly gee, Polyphonic, that was a great video. I sure wish you did have a hundred other essays of that type, preferably in a portable medium that I could take with me and consume at my own leisure like a book. Well, well, if you're thinking that, I got good news for you. The video you just watched was actually a chapter of my book, Century of Song, 101 Songs That Shaped American Music. That book is out now, available wherever books are sold. So if you want to learn more about American music history, check it out. It's 101 short essays like the one you just watched. And if you want to check it out, but you can't afford to buy a new book, one of the great ways that you can actually help me is by putting in a request to your local library. That way, the library will get in the book, you'll be able to get it for free, because libraries rule, and more people will be able to read it, and just everyone benefits. Or maybe you've already gotten the book. If that's the case, one of the best ways that you can help me is by going to Amazon and leaving a review on the book. All right, well, thanks for watching, and honestly wanted to say I've gotten lots of great comments about the book already, and... I really appreciate them, so thank you all. Okay. Bye.